to me, as everyone here knows, uh, those of us in the DeFusco family have experienced this quite a bit. Uh, the siblings were ten, we now number four. It means we've lost six siblings. And uh, they say it's most difficult for the people who are left behind. There is a certain freedom for the people who passed away. So I'm going to uh, do a little storytelling and some poetry all around that. 3.15 in the morning, California time. My sister Terry's soft little voice on the phone. Jackie passed away. Jackie passed away. No, 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 that can't be. It can't happen that fast. Then I go back to sleep. Waking up at 7 a.m., hearing Terry's voice in my head. Jackie passed away. Jackie passed away. Torrents of tears. A cry that comes from somewhere deep inside. A weeping that is years of tears from the distant past. A helpless, hopeless wailing that makes my whole body shudder and my heart begin to flutter. Jackie passed away. Jackie passed away. For me, that grief experience is most powerful in the morning. For some reason, I go to sleep and I think it didn't happen. And then I wake up and I have to tell myself, oh yeah, that happened. So this is a poem about that. This poem was written after my brother Michael and my sister Pat died. In the morning comes the morning. After the dreamtime salutations, after the wandering in the night, that's when it sinks in. That's when it weighs you down. In the morning comes the morning. After the cloud walking, after the free falling, that's when the slow tears stream. That's when you silently, silently sing the blues. In the morning comes the morning. After the night shroud slips away, after the sad angels fly away home, that's when your sunrise sleepwalking. That's when you truly feel alone. In the morning comes the morning. After holding hands with the past, after singing with the ancestors, that's, that's when you return to yourself. That's when it becomes real. In the morning comes the morning. After the spirit kisses, after the ghostly dialogues, that's when the moon presses down on your heart. That's when the air seems thick and dense. In the morning comes the morning. After dealing with the darkness, after walking through the fire, that's when your past becomes present. That is when you see the face of God. These ten kids, as each one has died, I just had an image. An image of a puzzle that instead of being put together, is being taken apart. Dealing with that sadness has been very difficult. Jackie was my little, little sister. I was always her protector. I was always the one who was defending her against my other brothers, particularly my younger brother, Freddie. Uh, I know that there's a certain closeness between the nieces and the nephews, all of whom are around the same age. So the nieces and the nephews and the cousins are much more like siblings. So I think that most of you guys are going through what most of guy, us guys have gone through with this particular passing of Jackie. And I wanted to bring it around a little bit to the positive side. I wanted to share the grief. I mean, grief is real. But there is a positive side. A day or so after she passed, I was walking back and forth from our laundry room, doing the laundry, when I felt a presence. I felt a presence at my right shoulder like a guardian angel. And I'm saying to myself, well, is this real? Is this only in my mind? I don't know. Okay, well, if it's real, let me just speak and see what happens. So I spoke through my mind. I said, is that you? Is that you? 
And she said, yep, yep, it's me, it's me. I said, I thought so. So, okay, how is it? How is it? What's it like? She said, it's great. It's great. I don't need a body. I'm stronger now than I've ever been. So I continued. I continued to play with that presence. I constantly kept her kind of at my shoulder. I was in rehearsal. I was doing a play. I was really busy. And Lupe will tell you this. I would be leaving for rehearsal. And I would turn around and I would go, Okay, Jack, come on. Let's go. I'm going to rehearsal. Okay, Jack. Please. And I would continue to talk to her. And I had her in the car with me. Always, always, always at my shoulder like this guardian angel. I was told, especially by those that were around her when she passed, that she always kept her sense of humor and she always kept her sense of joy. Well, a couple of things that I heard were, she said, don't, don't, don't send flowers, send money. Uh, she was getting body scans all the time and periodically as they come in to do the scan on her, she would go, okay, scan me, welcome to Walmart, people, scan me. Uh, one of them was on two, two. These, these last two things were on Facebook, many of you probably saw it. Okay, okay, not the best plan for someone with bone cancer to fall on a sidewalk. <laughs> and the final one is the final, final thing that Jackie said on Facebook, which was, a beautiful sunrise from my hospital bed. Glory. I'm going to do one more little poem. This is a poem that I actually wrote kind of about the urge.